The Myers-Briggs personality test is used throughout society, and many just assume it to be meaningful. The science shows otherwise. I'm Brian Dunning, and you're watching In Fact. Welcome to the show that brings you the real facts behind popular myths. At some point in your life, you've probably been given the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator Test and been assigned a four-letter personality type. You were probably given the test by an employer, a recruiter, or maybe a coach who helps to help you find some direction in which you would be the most successful in life. The promise is almost like having a crystal ball. Will you be a better manager or a better employee? Should you work in this field or that field? In some cases, important life decisions are being made for people based only on this test. Now the test itself consists of about a hundred simple questions and the results are given as one of two letters in each of four dichotomies, attitude, perceiving, judging, and lifestyle. So every test taker ends up in one of 16 possible personality types, executive, caregiver, scientist, idealist, and so on. It seems like it's the miracle solution to making everyone happier and more productive and every company more successful, right? Wrong. The first clue is that there's one industry that does not use the test, psychology because they know that it's completely unscientific and statistically no better than a horoscope. Myers and Briggs were not scientists or psychologists. They were a mother and daughter in the early 20th century. Although neither had any training or education in psychology, they were both fans of Carl Jung's writings on psychometry and they thought they could do a better job. They first developed their test during World War II when there were a lot of women entering the workforce for the first time, and Myers and Briggs hoped their test would help them find jobs they would be most effective in. So it was a good idea and well-intentioned. But the test doesn't show your skills or aptitudes. It merely reflects your preferences, and those are two very different things. Half the people who take it, again, score differently, because our preferences change day by day, depending on our mood, our recent experiences, and other factors. That's reflected in the data, which shows most people land somewhere in the middle of the bell curve for each of the four dichotomies. Take this one, the introvert-extrovert dichotomy. Extreme introverts and extroverts make up the tails of the curve, but most people are somewhere in the middle. Myers-Briggs posits that this data describes two groups of people. It doesn't. Two peaks would show two groups. One peak shows one group. Myers-Briggs cuts this bell curve straight down the middle. Most people are near the line, which is why they score differently day to day. And this is a completely invalid statistical analysis of the data. The result? Many scientific studies have found there's no correlation at all between people's aptitudes and career success and their Myers-Briggs score. That includes one of the early customers, the Army Research Institute, which concluded the science could not justify the use of the test in career counseling. So, unfortunately, I do not have a magic crystal ball for you today that can make all of your hard decisions for you. I'm Brian Dunning, and this has been In Fact. In Fact is made possible by financial support from viewers like you. Please visit infactvideo.com.